right, guys, Captain Jesse Mills here with BackwaterFlyFishing.com coming at you with this awesome episode from In the Spread. Today we're going to be covering my favorite inshore flies for species like tarpon, redfish, snook, and sea trout. If you're new to fly tying, this is going to be an awesome episode for you. We're going to cover the history behind each pattern. We're also going to talk a little bit about the materials. We're going to go over the gear that I keep at my fly tying desk and go through a step-by-step -step construction of each fly pattern. So the first fly we're going to get into today, guys, is a fly that I call the Commissioner. It's a great fly for small to medium-sized tarpon on the east and west coasts of Florida. Before we get started on that, let's go through some of the gear that I keep at my fly tying desk. Alright guys, here we are at my tying desk. It's a pretty basic setup. Uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you through some of the stuff I have here. And these are things that I always keep on my desk. That way they're right at hand. So what we're going to start with guys first and foremost is this vise right here. This is the Renzetti Traveler Series vise. It's a saltwater style vise. Um, I've really liked it. It's nice and light. If you're doing a lot of traveling, which I am right now, uh, I like to bring it along and it's not going to weigh down uh, your bag or anything like that. So that's the vise I use. Uh, when it comes to scissors guys, these are primarily what I'm using. And this is a four inch scissor. It's got a micro tip on it. It's by Dr. Slick. I really like the scissor a lot, but I always carry a scissor just like this too. And I keep this guy around the desk at all times. If you're cutting heavy wire, if you're cutting mono, something that you're going to be doing uh, for a weed guard or something like that, it's good to have those low quality scissors around. Uh, and you can find a scissor like that in most of your first aid kits. Uh, it's really just a basic surgical scissor. So that's what we're dealing with. When it comes to a whip finisher, this again, this is just a standard stainless steel whip finisher from Dr. Slick. And you can make these guys, a lot of guys make these out of clothes hangers. It's whatever you want to do, anything that's going to give you a nice good whip finish. Uh, this right here, as far as a bodkin's concerned or a dubbing needle, this is a good guy to have around, okay? What you're going to be doing with this is maybe just smoothing out a lot of that uh, UV gel, which we'll get to in a minute, uh, and it keeps from getting your scissors all, all dirty. So as far as a bobbin, this is what I use. This is just a very simple bobbin. If i got to put added pressure on any of the thread, I'm going to be doing that with my fingers, okay? So very simple on the bobbin, and I always keep this guy right here. This is a lifesaver. If you're doing EP stuff, uh, maybe brushing out some craft fur, pseudo hair, stuff like that, this guy is going to come in handy. So keep a nice simple uh, comb like that around the desk. The other thing that's never far is a Prismacolor marker, guys. If we're doing redfish flies, bait fish flies, really anything you need to color up, Prismacolor is what I like to use. A lot of people use Sharpie markers, uh, but I've had a lot of success with these guys here. So that's what I stick with. That was a great marker. You know, if you, they come in pretty much any color you want. So you should be able to find what you need in Prismacolor. When it comes to adhesives, uh, for finishing off the fly heads, I like to use Zapagap. Uh, if you're not familiar with Zap products, you should check them out. Uh, pretty awesome stuff. If I'm putting eyes on, maybe securing them to some EP fiber, craft fur, really any bait fish fly that's going to require eyes, then I'm going to be using the Zap gel. Okay, it comes in a tube just like this and it really bonds those eyes together. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, if we're doing UV stuff and we need some UV resin, what's worked for me in the past and continues to work is Loon UV Thick, okay, clear. I use this all the time, guys. Some of the flies we're going to tie uh, in this video are going to be using that. So we're going to keep that close to the desk as well. Uh, you see all of my thread here. Most of the thread that I like to tie with is 210 Flat Wax Nylon uh, from Danville. Pretty good stuff especially on your saltwater patterns. If I need some smaller stuff, then I can drop down something a little finer. Uh, but that's pretty much what I use for my threads. And obviously right here, guys, you never want to sit down without a cup of coffee. Uh, if it's afternoon, maybe we're drinking a beer or something like that. So that's pretty much what I got here on the desk. You'll notice this mat at the bottom. This is just a standard tying mat uh, from Hairline. It's got nice little rivets in it. If you drop your eyes, if you drop your tungsten bead or whatever it is, it's not going to roll off the table. It's going to get stuck right in there. So that comes in handy a lot. And uh, I think we got everything covered. So we're going to move on now and get into this first fly. 
All right, guys, so to start off the materials, the hook that we're going to be using is a 4 aught Gamagatsu SL12. It's a really nice tarpon hook, got a pretty wide gap, and it tends to stick them pretty well. So that's what we're going to be using. When it comes to thread, we're using Danville Flat Wax Nylon, uh, and this is in the color brown. It looks a little red, but it's going to finish this fly off really well. When we get into the eyes, guys, we're using just adhesive holographic eyes from Hairline, and these are 7 32nd when it comes to the sizes. So that's what we're dealing with. That color right there is called Super Pearl. It's a really nice blend. Uh, it's going to have some blues, greens, yellows, whites all mixed in. Really ends up looking really nice. Um, as far as the body of this fly for what you would call the tail section, we're going to be using Extra Select Marabou in tan. Okay. And there's a reason we're going to be using the extra select marabou versus like a strung blood quill uh, or other types of marabou. So we'll cover that in just a minute. For flash on this fly, uh, we're going to be using flash of blue accent. Um, really a solid fly. I also like to use grizzly, uh, stuff like that. Black and red is what we're dealing with. Any type of flash that you like, you could use. Um, I tend to go with a smaller diameter flash for this particular fly. But as long as we're dealing with a black-red spectrum, it's going to blend in uh, and, and kind of accent the fly very nice. So for the head of the fly, we're just using an EP brush. This is the Craft Fur brush, 3-inch, uh, and it's brown and sand colored. So you can see there's some UV uh, stuff going on in there. Ends up being a really nice brush to finish off this fly. And we're going to be using our UV thick, so you're going to want to have this around to finish off the head of the fly. It's going to hold the eyes on a little bit. It's also going to cover up the thread wraps and produce a really nice, strong, durable head. So those are our materials. Make sure you got those laid out. We're going to start tying this fly, okay? All right, guys. So we got our Gamagatsu SL12 4 aught hook in our vise. And we're going to go ahead and start our thread towards the back of the hook and work our way backwards. Just build a nice little thread base right there okay and then we're going to go ahead and trim that off and then we're going to move our thread back up a little ways maybe a little bit farther right in front of the point on that hook come right back to there so the first material that's going to go on this fly is our extra select marabou and we're going to go ahead and select three plumes out of this so go ahead and remove all of those plumes right out. And what we're going to look for, guys, well, this plume right here is almost perfect for our tail. It's nice and long. It's got a nice soft tip. And that's what we're going to use for the tail section of our fly. So we're going to set that one aside. And we're going to look for ones that we're going to be palmering uh, around the base, OK? This one right here is very nice. It's got a very long plume sticking out each side, uh, very full. So we're going to set this one aside and look for one just like this as well. Alright, and there you go guys. You can see this plume here. Again, very full, very long. We're going to go ahead and take this one out and we're going to be using those three. So the reason that we chose to use this Extra Select Marabou, uh, you can see how full this feather is. If we went with, say, a strung blood quill or something like that, a lot of times the quality in those aren't as good. They might not be as long and they might not be as full. So what we're going to do is always stick with this Extra Select Marabou. That way we know we're getting a high quality product and hopefully are going to end up with a high quality fly. So here we have one of our marabou plumes, and we're going to go ahead and secure this backwards. You want to stroke that fiber back, and we want it to be about three and a half inches sticking off the back of our thread wraps. So just like that. So hold that back and do a few loose wraps, and then a few tight ones right after that, moving forward. Okay? Just like that. Now that we have that secure, we're going to come back and make a few wraps underneath the feathers. Okay? Just like that. 
Now we can move in and cut that off. Go ahead, cover that up with some nice tight wraps all the way forward and work all the way back just like that. Okay. So now that we have our marabou attached as our tail, we're going to work on palmering these other two plumes up and around this shank and securing them backwards. Before we do that, we're going to have to trim each of these feathers. Alright, so here are our two marabou plumes and we're going to go ahead and trim these a little shorter before we palm them. So what we're looking at is where the stem starts to thicken up and we're going to just go in there and trim it off, okay? So right about here, trim that off. So that's what we end up with, nice, nice thick plume. We're going to do the same thing for the other feather. Right where we see this starting to get thick, we're going to go ahead and trim that off. Right about there. Just like that. So now, let's go ahead and secure the base of one of our feathers right to the side of the hook just like that okay make sure it's nice and tight move the thread thread forward and we want to grab the tip of this feather make sure we're not pinching off any of those plumes and we're going to palmer this around the hook okay as we palmer we're going to be pulling our feathers back just like this Keep going as we go, making sure we're not pinching off any of those plumes. Letting them just fan out, okay? Just like that. Pulling back is very important. Okay, all the way around. So we come right up to the thread. Then we're going to pull these back. Make sure we haven't pinched any off, just like that, okay? And we're going to tie that feather off, we can come in close and give it a trim, and then we're going to build up and secure those feathers. As we build that up, we're going to work backwards over some of those feathers just a little bit. Okay, just like that, nice and tight. So there we are. We got a nice tail in the back and we've kind of built that body up as so we've moved forward. Go ahead and secure that nicely. Move the thread right back towards the back, just like that. All right guys, so we switched angles here. We're gonna attach the next feather and do the same motion. That way you can get a good idea of this process, okay? So same thing, we're going to attach our feather right there at the base, okay? Make sure it's nice and secure. Some good thread wraps over that. And then we're going to take the tip of the feather and we're going to palm her forward. So you can see how this works. We're going to be pulling this feather back, pulling those feathers back as we wrap forward, okay? Making sure we're not pinching them off. Just like that. If you have hackle pliers, guys, now's a good time to get those hackle pliers out. Uh, if you're stubborn like me and want to do it with your hands, uh, that's going to work out just fine too. So once we get that forward, guys, same thing with the other one. We're going to pull these up. Brush these fibers back. We really don't want to be pinching off those. We want to make sure there's a lot of life in them. So hold that back. Do some wraps to secure that feather. Go in there, chop it off. Okay. Pull that back. And again, we're going to wrap backwards to cover up some of those feathers. Okay. So we want to hold them back and do some wide gaps right back like that and we're going to build this up and secure that just like that
Perfect. All right, guys, so now we're gonna attach our flash. And what I've done is selected three, three strands or three little fibers. And we're gonna do a V around our thread and pull three down each side of this file, okay? So we wanna tighten up our thread, put these right around it, and pinch it in a V, just like that. Now as we tie this down, you're gonna notice those are gonna go straight to the left and to the right of the fly. Wrap them all the way back. Pull them back, and we're gonna cut these right past right past those feathers, just like that. Again, just do a few wraps, make sure those are nice and tight and in place. All right guys, so what we have here is our craft fur brush, and we're gonna go ahead and tie one end in, just like we've been tying those feathers in, and we're gonna make sure again, we have nice tight wraps to secure that down, okay? Once we have that down, move our thread right up to there, and we're going to palmer this back the exact same way we did the feathers. We want to make sure we're pulling these fibers backwards, just like this, as we go around. Okay? Every little ways, we're going to be pulling those fibers back. Pulling them back. And we want to do three or four wraps. Uh, this is your preference, how thick you want this head to be. Um, I usually stick in the three or four range. So right about now, we're going to pull these fibers upwards and try and get a clearing right down at the base of the hook, just like that. And we're going to bring our thread over. <clears throat> and now this is where those uh, simple scissors come in, okay? We don't want to be damaging our good scissors. We want to get nice and flush and just pinch that off. Now there's going to be a little bit of wire sticking up here. You want to push that down with your finger or else it can cut your thread. So once that's flush, pull these fibers back and do some nice tight wraps. Okay, working backwards. And we're going to keep working backwards. You can see how we're moving back on that. And then we're going to go all the way forwards and cover that up. We want to make sure we're securing this down to where we're going to cover up that little bit of metal or wire that was inside that craft fur brush. And then just build up a little tapered head. Doesn't have to be real big, but we're going to be sticking our eyes to this, so we want to have a nice little platform there. Okay? Just like that. Now at this point, you could take your bodkin or your dubbing needle, and you want to pluck this out a little bit. Okay? These fibers, when we palmer them, they kind of wrap over each other. So you want to be able to pull those out. That way, no fibers just laying down doing nothing. Pull that back. You can see how full that looks. And now we want to take this thread and make a nice little thread base going all the way forwards to the eye of the hook. all the way forward to there and on our way back we're doing sort of like a wide spiral wrap backwards okay that's completely a style issue on the fly that's what I like to do um, you could just do regular wraps backwards but that's pretty much what we're looking at with your fly yours should look similar to this here alright so now you can go ahead and get your whip finisher and we're gonna come in and whip finish this fly right towards the back of the head Okay, so set up your whip finish, come right up on that fly, and we're going to rotate right back towards those feathers. For this fly, you only need to do one strong whip finish, and that's going to be okay. Come in real close, cut that off. So that's our fly. We're going to add the eyes and do our, our UV resin head here in just a minute. Alright guys, so we have one of our eyes here. We're going to put just a little bit of the zap gel right on the head of this. There you go, front and center. Now we're going to put it right on the fat part of the hook. So we want this eye to be a little bit on the craft fur and situated a little bit 
primarily actually on the thread wraps. So right there in the corner, just like that. All right, so now we're gonna put some glue on our second eye. Same amount, just right in the center. All right, so now we're gonna put this eye right on the opposite side of the fly. Again, making sure we're symmetric with that other eye, just like that. All right, guys, so now it's time to come in and do our UV head, okay? And when we apply the UV thick, it's gonna come right in between those eyes, take up the gap on the top and the bottom. We're also gonna cover this whole thread wrap. So we're gonna take it slow, we're gonna show you how we're gonna do that. Here we go, we're gonna add our UV thick, and we're gonna make a big pile right in between those eyes, okay? Fill it all the way up and give it a second to just let it settle. Now once it's settled down just like it is, we're going to zap it. You can really only do this for five to ten seconds and it should set pretty good. We'll go back and hit it again afterwards. So now that we got that, we're going to flip it over, do the same for the bottom. And it's really important right now, we're going to try and do this uh, without getting any air bubbles in there. You could also use your bodkin to come in and smoothen some of that out, okay? Take it just a minute and make sure we got it good. Go ahead and zap that. Again, five to ten seconds and this will set pretty well. Uh, you are going to have to go back and really get down in there and make sure it sets um, once we get everything together. So now we're going to make sure we cover up these thread wraps with a nice thin layer, okay? Not a whole lot. And what I like to do is come right down and then start rotating towards myself, making sure I'm laying a nice even coat across the nose of this fly. Alright, double check it. Make sure you don't have any gaps in there. If you do, you can move that around with your dubbing needle and bodkin. Make sure we're nice and even on that If everything looks good, you can go ahead and set that. Well guys, that right there is a step-by-step -step video of how to tie the commissioner. Uh, pretty awesome fly, nice full body fly. Um, this color scheme right here is one of my favorites, real natural pattern. Um, chartreuse in yellow, purple and black. This fly is going to look great in all those colors, but for today guys, if you followed our steps, you should be staring at a fly just like this. Oh man, the commissioner is just an absolute beast in the water. I uh, came up for the inspiration on that guy from classic, you know, key style tarpon flies with those sexy little thread wraps in the front and just a big bushy rear end uh, just a really really good looking fly you know in the water the thing's a poon puncher for sure um, you know dropping that sucker right in there fish are coming in few strips and he eats I mean that's what it's all about and that fly just tends to get it done um, like I mentioned in the video earlier you know the fly looks great in other other color patterns black purple real real good looking um, anytime I put eyes on it, I like to accent the eyes uh, completely opposite of the color spectrum that we've tied in. So with black and purple, you do like a yellow eye. With your chartreuse, I like to do red eyes. Um, anything that's going to be essentially the inverse of the body of the fly. So uh, really good pattern. If you get a chance to tie it, 
give it a try. Uh, take it out to your favorite tarpon grounds and see what happens. I bet you you're going to be pretty impressed with it. Not only it's appealing the water, but also when you're landing fish all day. All right, guys, so now that we've covered the commissioner, let's get inside, grab a brew, and then we'll get started on our next fly. cover some of these materials for the backwater special and we're just going to dive right into it. So what we're going to be doing first is applying a tan extra select craft fur just like this. Once this is on we're going to be using a gray Prismacolor marker that we went over before uh, to make some barring on that. After that we're going to use some more extra select craft fur and this is in like a medium brown color, um, a rusty color sometimes you'll find it labeled. After that, we're getting into a material that's actually pretty hard to find. Um, and there are some substitutions that you could use instead of using this material, and we'll cover that. But it's the sparkle brush that EP makes. Uh, it's a really nice material, however, it sells out just about everywhere you could find it. So to substitute for this, you could use ice dub. Okay, pinches of ice dub, and I'll show you how to do that too. It's pretty simple. We're also using uh, some copper colored sparkle brush, so gold and copper. Uh, the other material that's going to go on after that is your UV polar chenille, uh, and this is in UV copper. It's a pretty awesome material. If you haven't tied with this, I use it in a lot of my flies when we're doing more of like a natural color presentation. Uh, really sweet, sweet material. And lastly, we're going to be rocking Foxy Brush, okay? This is from EP again. Uh, you'll see me use a lot of this, the Foxy Brush in both the three inch like this and in the inch and a half, and that's in tan, okay? So those are our basic materials for the fly. We're going to tie this fly on a Gamagatsu SC15 one knot hook. Uh, it's a pretty basic, you could say, saltwater hook, but it worked really well for this fly uh, and a lot of other types of flies that we're going to be doing. So. The eyes on this fly are your basic hologram eyes, and these are 3 8 okay? It's a pretty large eye, but I like the way it looks on this fly, uh, and it kind of sets in good. This is a yellow. Uh, you could use gold, anything like that, but I kind of like to keep it yellow or gold, okay? Um, coming into that, we're going to be using the zap gel again to put our eyes on, just like we did on the previous fly, uh, and we're also going to use some UV thick to cover up the thread wraps and fill in in between the eyes if we have any gaps. So that's what we're looking at getting into, so let's get started. So here we go guys, we have our SC15 locked in our vise, and we're going to go ahead and start our thread wraps. We're using that same brown thread that we used on the commissioner. And again, we're going to start right on the back of the fly and just build up a little base right there. And that's where we're going to start our materials just like that. You can go ahead and trim this off. There we go. And then cover up that little tag that sticks out. Just like that. Perfect. Now we're ready to start our craft fur. Alright, so here's our extra select craft fur and this is the tan color. And we've got it laid out here. The way I'd like to cut this is just to cut little tabs out of this piece. So that's what we're going to do. I like to cut them about three quarters to an inch long and maybe a centimeter wide. So we're going to go ahead and cut that. It's going to look just like this. And then we want to cut across as well. When you're cutting across, try and slide that as close to that fabric as you can. That way you're not trimming fibers. And then we can pull our piece off. And that's what we're dealing with. Alright guys, so this is the piece we just cut off. If you notice, there's a lot of little fibers down in the bottom of that. And we want to discard of those. We also want to cut that fiber off or fabric off. So the way we're going to do that is pinch these longer fibers, take our scissors and cut right along the edge of this, okay? Just like that. Cut that fabric off and now we can go ahead and pull these smaller fibers out, just like that. 
go ahead and do that. And I keep a bowl like this around. You can do it right into a trash can, that's fine. Now you can see there's an angle to this fabric and we're going to go ahead and trim it off even. Perfect. Now we're ready to attach these longer fibers to our fly. Here we are guys, we're going to attach our craft fur and all we're going to do is do some nice loose wraps at first and then really secure that down as we go forward. Just like that, okay? You can see that craft fur is sticking back. If there's any loose fibers, you can pull those out. And then we want to go back with nice tight wraps all the way back to the base. Okay? Just like that. I do like to post this up a little bit like we did with those feathers in the last fly. So you just hold that up and do some under wraps where we come around just like that. And you can see how that sticks up a little bit. That's exactly how we want it guys, just like that. So now that our craft fur is nice and secure, we're going to use our Prismacolor marker and we're going to come in and put some barring on this. I like to do six little strips of barring on both sides. So we're going to pull this craft fur back, go one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, just like that. So now that we have these locked in, we're going to go ahead and add our medium brown craft fur and we're going to follow those same steps for preparing that craft fur as we did with the sand killer. So we're going to get started on that. Perfect. So now we're going to attach this brown craft fur and we're going to put it right on top of that other color. Use nice tight wraps to secure that down. And now we want to walk it back all the way to where that sand colored craft fur was tied in. So they're almost looking like one bunch of craft fur, just like that. And you can do some under wraps like this just to make sure they're secured together. And that's what we should be dealing with, okay? So we got our sand barred color on the bottom, and then that brown color sitting right on top. So now we're going to attach our gold EP sparkle brush and we want to tie that right in there nice and tight and we're going to palmer this around. You only need to do three or four wraps. I would say four would be at max because we're going to be putting some copper and the UV polar chenille in front of this as well. So we got two right there. We're just going to finish this off right here. So we pull all that back just like that and then we want to bring our thread in there cover it up just like that. Now this stuff has a wire in it so we're going to use our simple scissors to come in real close cut that off. Again push that wire down with your finger just like that and then do some nice thread wraps to cover that up. So now we're going to attach our copper sparkle brush right to the front and do the same thing we did with that gold one. Just do a few palmers around. Make sure you pull these, these fibers or sparkles back as we go. Okay, Just like that. Pull that up. And cut it off. Make sure you grab your simple scissors again. Do a nice flat cut on there. If there's extra fibers like that, just pull them back. And make sure we push that little wire down again. Go ahead and do some nice wraps over that to secure it. So now we're going to apply our UV polar chenille. And this comes braided up on a nice nice long rope. It's about three foot long. We're going to go ahead and cut about three inches off and you want to again separate these fibers a little bit. Sneak in there and cut it off. So bring that polar chenille you just cut right up and tie it in using some nice secure wraps. 
once you have that tied in. You can use your hackle pliers here again guys, but if you're like me, you're going to be using your fingers. And you're just going to palmer this around. Okay. I like to do three to five wraps, depending on what I'm doing with this stuff. It's going to shine pretty good in the water, so you don't need a whole lot. You can see all these long fibers sticking out. And right about here, we're looking pretty good. So you want to separate that if you can. Do some nice tight wraps. Come in. This is soft material, so you can use your better scissors to snip that off. So you can see these fibers are every which way right now, so we're going to pull them back and go ahead and do some secure wraps around there and kind of work our way backwards, almost all the way to where that copper stopped. About like that. And now we want to cover this up pretty good. Pretty much just like that. So that's what we should be looking at, guys. Next step, guys, is going to be to attach our Foxy brush. And we're going to attach that right in there. Again, there's a wire in this, so be careful with your thread. Once you have that secure, bring your thread all the way up using tight wraps to the eye of the hook. Just like that. Now this, we have to palmer just like we did the craft fur brush in the last last fly and this is going to take four or five wraps around. We don't want to do uh, too many wraps, we don't want to be too excessive because we still want to let this fly push water but allow the material to have enough room to wiggle around. Right about there. And this brush is going to come a little different every time you buy it. Sometimes it's going to be real thick. If it's real thick, then you'll need less wraps. If it's not very thick, then you're going to be having to do six, seven, eight wraps sometimes for that. So now we want to move in real close on this and trim it off. Okay. Go ahead and build up a little head covering that, uh, that little piece of wire that still sticks up. Once that's completely covered, you can take your bodkin or dubbing needle and pluck some of this out. This fiber really bunches up on itself, so you can see all that fiber is going to come to life as you pluck it out. Okay, Just like that. Builds up a nice head on the fly. At this point, guys, the fly itself is done except for putting the eyes on. So you can come in with your whip finisher and go ahead and whip finish that right where we're at. Come in and trim that and there we go. If you followed our steps guys you should be right where I'm at. Alright guys so we got one of our eyes here we're gonna go ahead and put some zap gel right on the front of there. Now this is a big eye and we're gonna use just a little bit more than we did last time. So, pretty good amount just like that. So now we're going to place that eye right up in the front to where we're almost touching our thread wraps. And it's going to take a minute for that zap gel to harden, but we want to make sure we get it right in there. You can use your bodkin to hold it on. Just like that. So now we're going to put our second eye on. So we're going to spin that vise around. Get that eye as even as we can with that other one. It's situated right on top. Now it's important. We want to check and make sure they're symmetric. It's always important. With big eyes like this, if they're off, that fly is going to wobble a little bit. And it's not going to look that natural. There will be a natural looking wobble to it with big eyes like this. But if we get it off too much, it just won't look right. So make sure they're as symmetric as you can get them. So now that we have both these eyes secure, we're going to go ahead and take our Loon UV Thick and fill in between those eyes a little bit where we have gaps and cover up our thread wraps. So here we go. We're going to pull these fibers back. 
and put a little bit of UV gel right in between the gap on these eyes, okay? Just like that. Let that sit in there, sink into some of those fibers. Then we're going to zap it. Again, five, ten seconds uh, is going to be good just to sit this, and then we'll come back at the end and stiffen it up just a little bit. We're going to reverse the fly, and we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. We're going to pull those fibers back, fill in a little bit in between these eyes. All right, there's a little fibers in there, but we could trim those off just like that and zap that. There we go. Then we're going to take some and put just a little head on this fly. That way we protect those thread wraps. And again, rotate towards you. Just putting a nice little coat on the front of that fly. Just like that. If you have to, Take your bodkin, make sure it's nice and smooth. There we go. It's pretty good. If we're happy with where it's at, guys, we go ahead and zap it up. Do it a few times around, make sure it's nice and set. Do a little more on the top and the bottom. Try and get in between those eyes. All right, and there we go. There are some little threads down here. We can get in there with our scissors and trim. So we'll flip that up, pull that back, and just trim right down at the base of that. There we go. So that's what we're looking at, guys. Alright guys, so here we have it, a finished product, Backwater Special. If there's a fly that really puts a staple on the Backwater name, it's going to be this guy. Really awesome pattern for snook and redfish around the mangroves. And right now you should have one finished, so put that online and get out there and give it a shot. Man, the history of the Backwater Special. Um... You know, the thing floated around the vise for a little bit, and uh, once I got all those materials lined up, it just jumped off and was a fish catching dude right off the bat. I mean, cruising around the lagoon system over there, Merritt Island, uh, Indian River, Banana River, Tampa Bay area, Cockroach Bay, Crystal River, pretty much both coastlines over there in Central Florida. It's just, it's been a fish catching dude. Um, we've been down here in Costa Rica for a little bit, been tossing it up near the mangroves, and fish like it. You know, it looks natural, it's got the, the bars on it, could be a pinfish. Uh, a number of those other little fish species are barred up, so it's a good looking fly. Um, clear water situations tends to work just fine, real natural type of presentation on it. Um, I tie in a few different colors, um, an olive and, and a sand color, uh, continuing to use the gold and the copper purple flash from the UV polar chenille uh, ends up looking pretty good. Those are my two favorite patterns. Uh, the classic color, which is what we tied uh, today in the lesson, that guy's always in my box. Uh, he's, he's never outside the box. So uh, that's a little bit about the fly, where it kind of originated. Um, but it probably jumped around the vise for a good year and a half before I kind of came up to with, okay, this is how this fly is going to get tied. Alright guys, so we're getting started on this next fly, and the first thing we have to do is come in and make our homemade UV eyes, okay? So I'm going to take you through the steps that I use to make these eyes. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive to make um, your own eyes. I know they're selling like six for, you know, five bucks or something in the store. I really wouldn't recommend buying those. Uh, you can really make your eyes for very, very cheap. So I'll take you through the materials I use. And we're going to go straight through this process, create our eyes, then we'll sit down and tie the fly. 
So obviously, you're going to need to have your UV light around. You're also going to want to bring your dubbing needle or your bodkin. And inside my box right here, what we're going to be using as far as UV gel is strictly Loon UV waiter repair. It's like $4, guys. Really cheap stuff, but it, for making eyes, making a lot of eyes, uh, you don't have to use your UV thick or anything like that. That's more expensive. Um, I make these orange eyes with glitter. These are just little tubes of glitter. It's orange gl glitter, really, really small. Uh, almost like a powder almost. And then we're going to need a lighter, just a standard lighter. And if you look in close, what I've done is cut little strands like this of 35 pound test monofilament. Could be any monofilament. This guy right here was like $4. There was a spool of Zebco. Uh, and that's what I like to use. So the very first step is going to be to burn both ends of this mono strand. There you go. And just get a little bead on the end. Flip it around. Do the same thing for the second end. Just like that. Alright, so now that we have our mono burned up, we're going to go ahead and open up this UV waiter repair and just put a little bit of UV gel right down on the paper. Okay? Just like that. Now the next thing we want to do is take our glitter, open that up, and dump a little bit of glitter out right on top of all that mess okay and you can put a good amount the more you use the stiffer it's going to get I wouldn't put too much because then it's going to want to break apart we still want that UV gel to be able to bond really nicely so now that we have that there you can take your bodkin or your dubbing needle and go ahead and just smooth it all in there kind of mix it up you could use a toothpick for this too if, if you don't want to get this guy a little dirty and that's what we're looking at so the next step, we're going to get a little bit of this gel and glitter on our bodkin. And then we're just going to rub it right all over and kind of rub some of that off onto that burnt little ball on the tip of that mono, just like that. So now you want to move it off to the side and go ahead and hit it with that UV light making sure you don't actually harden up that pile of UV gel you got there with the glitter in it. And once it's set a little bit, that's fine. We could do the other eye. Uh, and then we'll come back and zap them both for a little bit and make sure they harden up completely. So for the second eye, we're going to do the same thing. Go ahead, rub some of that off. And then you want to ball it up and get that shape that you want and then we're gonna zap it so after we zap this eye we're gonna wanna bring that other eye into the picture and get both eyes nice and nice and heated up nice and hard if you don't do that guys the whole eye can actually pull off of that tip of mono so you really wanna just soak that with that UV light make sure it's nice and hard Afterwards, I usually, when I make eyes, do about a dozen sets of these and set them out in the sun to harden. I rarely do just one set of eyes at a time. And there we go. Alright guys, here we are back at the tying desk. Uh, we've already created the eyes for the poppin' flat shrimp, and now we're going to cover the other materials that we're going to be using. So, for a thread, we're going to be using Danville Flat Wax Nylon 210 and Olive. For a hook, I used two different hooks. I'm kind of jumping back and forth between both. The hook I originally tied on and still do is a must add. It's really just the updated 007 that they have out uh, that they're going to be switching to. The other hook is uh, from Daiichi. It's a pretty solid hook. I think it's a little lighter uh, than the new 007 style. Uh, and this is the 2546. It's a pretty standard hook, O'Shaughnessy Bend. Uh, but it's pretty awesome. A real sharp hook, uh, real durable. So those are the two hooks that I like to use. For the fly we're going to tie, we're going to stick uh, with an S71 SMP DT. It's the new, like I said, 007 style hook from Mustad. Um, for foam, 
this foam right here, we're using two different sizes. So there's going to be a three millimeter sheet and a one and a half millimeter sheet that we're going to use. And I'll show you how we cut that in here in just a minute. When it comes to the brushes that we're using, again, we're, we're using some UV brushes. Um, the one is an inch and a half foxy brush, okay, in pale olive. The other one is the full three inch wide foxy brush in pale olive as well. We do use a little bit of flash, kind of just to uh, resemble the antennas on the shrimp, and it's more like a peacock style flash. So again, I like it to be crystal flash. You want it to be very small diameter. Uh, and some of the grizzly flashes are going to work too uh, if you want to if you want to use that. Um, as far as adhesives, all we're really going to need is our Zapagab. So we got our Zapagab here, and we're really just going to use a few drops of that guy right on on the head after we whip finish. So that's what we're looking at, and we'll go ahead and start that process. So the first step, guys, is going to be to cut our foam. And we have a three millimeter foam and our one and a half millimeter foam right out in front of us. What we're gonna do is take some big scissors like this and cut about a centimeter strip all the way up both of these foams, okay? So here we go. Next. You're going to take your millimeter and a half foam and we're going to cut about an inch section right off of that, just like this. Now what we want to do is cut at an angle and kind of make a, an arrowhead on the tip of this. So cut from one angle up, just like that, flip it over, do the same thing. Just like that. Perfect. So we want to set this piece aside. Then we want to take our thicker three millimeter foam and just go ahead and cut a tip right on that, kind of like a spear. There you go. And those are our two pieces. So now that our foam's finished, we have our Mustad S71 SMP DT right here. It's a one out hook in our vise. We're going to go ahead and start our thread right towards the back of that hook, kind of like we've been on the other patterns, and working right back towards that bend, move that thread up a little bit and snip this off. Now the first material we're going to use on this fly is our 3 inch foxy brush, and what we're going to do here is lift it up, fold some of these fibers backwards, that way they're doubled over on each other. Go ahead and pinch those off, and then come in with your scissors and trim right along that wire. Okay, that way you get a nice little pinch of those longer fibers, just like that. Now take that pinch and go ahead and tie it in right over our thread wraps. Once it's secured, work it backwards all the way back to the bend of the hook. That way you got those fibers sticking right out like that. All right, so now that we have our foxy brush secured there, we're gonna go ahead and add just one strand of flash on the back to imitate the antennas. So we'll take that one strand, wrap it around the thread just like that, and tie it in directly on top. We're not gonna split this to one side. Both strands now are gonna go right down the center and sit right on top of that material. Now when we trim it, we want it to be about four inches long. Okay, come back and trim it off. Now we're going to grab our UV eyes and we want to secure the eye right about like that. That way it's sticking off the back of the hook, um, kind of at a slope. So we want to pinch that there and really secure this down well. Okay, from right where that fiber starts come all the way forward, tightening that mono down to the shank of the hook. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we want to do some wraps in between to try and post that eye out just a little bit. Okay, just like that. Perfect. 
Now we want to come in and trim that tab off. Take your thread, cover up that butt end, and we're set. So now we're going to use those same steps to secure our other eye on the other side of the hook. We want to try and get these to be about the same distance so that they're symmetric. And again, use some nice tight wraps to secure that down. All the way back. Once it's secure, you can go ahead and trim it off. Cover it up and move all the way back up and kind of post that eye out just a little bit. Just like we did that other one. There we go. Kind of see what we're working with. You can use your hands to maybe twist the mono just a little bit uh, to get it exactly where you want it. Nice thread wraps all the way over. And that's what we're looking at guys. You can see those eyes are right where we want them. So now we're going to add our first piece of foam which acts as the beak of the shrimp. So we want to set this beak right on the top. Just like that. That way the pointed side is just sticking out about three quarters of an inch about to where those eyes are. Then do an, one nice tight wrap to secure it and go ahead and cover up all that foam. Some nice secure wraps and even move backwards just a little bit from there. And there you go just like that. So you can see now guys this shrimp fly is really starting to take shape and our next step is actually going to be adding this long strip of foam right on the top and that's going to be what we're going to use to build up the body of the fly. Now when we secure this foam we want to take that tip that we cut off place it right down over those thread wraps and secure it with one nice tight wrap. Okay. Once we have it in place do a few more tight wraps and then cover up this whole foam piece trying to keep it on the top of the hook shank. Now the last material we're going to put on this fly is going to be our inch and a half EP Foxy brush in Pale Olive. So now what we have to do is take one of these strands and secure it right to the side of those thread wraps. It's going to take three or four polymers of this material around to reach the end of those wraps. Then this foam is going to pull over and be secured right at that point. So we'll go through those steps right now. We have our material here. We're going to go ahead, secure it right on the side of those thread wraps, just like that, and move our thread all the way up. This should only take three or four wraps. And remember, when we palm our material like this, we want to be pulling it backwards like that as we go forwards, okay? two, that's three, and we'll do one more, four. There you go, kind of separate those materials and pinch that material off. You want to try and bring all the material that's sitting over those thread wraps down like this, that way it's all facing the bottom of the fly. Then pull this foam over top let those fibers go and do a loose wrap to a pinch. That way you've pinched that material off right at the front of those wraps and you're going to do two more wraps. So we have three wraps going around that foam. So now what we have to do is lift this up and move our thread forward just a little ways, okay? About a third the way to the eye of the hook. You're then going to take your, your foxy brush and do two wraps around, just two. That's two wraps there. Pinch it off, just like that. And use that same method of holding that foam down and pinching that foam off. Then give it two more tight wraps and we're gonna repeat that process all the way to the eye of the hook. So then one wrap, two wraps, 
pinch that material off, fold our foam down, secure that there, one, two, lift this up again, come all the way up to the eye of the hook, give two little thread, two little wraps around, and then you're going to pinch that off right at the eye of the hook. Now remember, this has a wire in it, so we want to use our simple scissors to sneak in there, pinch that wire off. Try and pull these fibers back and just cover up that little piece of metal that sticks out of there. Fold your foam down, use that same method to secure it. Two more wraps, it's nice and tight, okay? At this point, we can go ahead and cut our foam off, just like that. Now all we're going to have to do is whip finish right around the tail on that shrimp. Come in and trim it off. And at the very bottom here, you're going to notice those thread wraps. Just drop a little bit of Zappa Gap or glue right around those wraps. Just like that. Alright guys, so once that Zappa Gap dries, we can go ahead and sneak in here and trim some of these front fibers down just a little bit. We would want to leave these back ones long, but just clear up right up at the front of the fly. Kind of tapering down to our hook. Alright guys, so there you have it, the finished version of the Poppin' Flat Shrimp. If you've followed us along, you're definitely staring at a killer fly just like this. So the story behind the Poppin' Flat Shrimp is, is kind of like this, I mean, everybody knows about the gurgler pattern, everyone's fished it, it catches fish, period, no matter what it looks like. I mean, the, the color patterns are endless between the foam, the tail, what you're using for the belly. I mean, the thing is, uh, it's a masterpiece and it catches fish, period. So, you know, one day I'm looking at a classic gurgler, a little bucktail on the tail, estaz on the belly, some tan on the top, and I'm thinking, this thing doesn't look realistic at all. There's no, uh, there's no reason fish are eating this aside from the fact that it pops on the surface. Uh, and, and wiggles a little bit. So I set out to kind of make one a little more realistic and after looking at uh, you know some of the the sinking crayfish patterns uh, that, that trout eat, I thought you know what take the weight out of there and let's make this thing float and pop and that's kind of what we did. We, we kind of worked on the eyes a little bit from green to orange to gold different things and uh, kind of settled down with this pattern as being one of our favorites the orange eyes are pretty awesome. It's a nice pale color with the tan body and you know I think it works really well. Redfish like it, snook are going to eat it, trout eat it. Uh, some of the baby tarpon uh, in the canals are going to be interested in it. So uh, it's got a wide range of, of possibilities in the fishing, fishing scene. So that's a little bit about the fly, kind of what got us into even tying it in the first place. And it's it's always hung out in the box after that you know it just it tickles them just right if you want to put it that way so that's all I got to say just rambling <laughs>
And we're gonna create those eyes the same way we did those shrimp eyes. I won't show that process since we just went through that. Uh, but we're gonna make them just the same as we did the last slide, but we're gonna be using green glitter instead of the orange. So we're gonna have green UV eyes that we'll add to this fly. Um, for the body of the fly, we're gonna be using inch and a half foxy brush, and this is in a root beer color. We're also gonna be using EP3D fibers, and this is the backcountry color that they have. I really, really like this color. And that's gonna be put on sort of like a merkin style onto this crab. Um, this crab pattern is really a mix between a merkin and sort of a fleeing crab style. So that's what we got for materials for an adhesive. We're using Zappa Gap to cover up around those thread wraps after we whip finish and the underbelly of this fly since it's going to be exposed. So that's what we're looking at there. We're also putting a weed guard on this fly and we're going to be using Seaguar 40 pound red label uh, fluorocarbon. That's what I like to use for all my weed guards. Um, if you like to use titanium or a different mono or fluoro, go ahead and do that. Uh, that's just what I've, I've gotten into the habit of using. So we're looking pretty good, guys. Let's go ahead and tie this fly. So step number one is going to be to start our thread towards the back of the hook. Go ahead and trim that tab off. And then we're going to move our thread all the way down and follow the bend of that hook to about right there and we're going to come right on back up. Cover up those loose wraps and end right at the base. The next step is going to be to add some of the salmon colored estaz. So you want to go ahead and pull that out and now we want to take one end of that estaz, go ahead and tie it in, bring it down the shank of the hook just like that and then bring your thread back up. We're going to do one nice wrap around the base so we got a lot of fluff sticking down and then we're going to pinch that off a few secure wraps and then we're going to come in and trim that off. Now we want to cover a lot of that up and pull it down. And work our way back up over a lot of those. That way we have a bunch sort of sticking down just like that. And then we want to come in real close and trim those off. That way they're a little shorter. There you go. Now our next step is going to be adding our eyes. We're going to tie that first eye in on the side of the hook shank. And we want to stick in at a downward angle following the bend of a hook. Just like that. So you can see how that eye is sticking down. Bring our thread all the way back up come in here and trim it off. Then we want to cover up that butt end and put some nice secure wraps all the way down. At this point, pull the eye out and do some wraps just to post that eye out a little bit. That way it's not just sticking out straight. There you go. Bring our thread right back up. Perfect. All right, so we've switched angles, guys, and we're gonna go ahead and attach that second eye. So we're gonna tie it in right on the side like we did the other one, and bring it down all the way to that estaz. And we wanna line them up and make sure they're the same length. That way we're symmetric on both sides of the fly. And then do some nice tight wraps to secure that to the hook shank, just like that. We can cut this excess mono off and then go back and secure that just a little bit more with some thread wraps and we're going to post this eye out so the way we're posting the eyes out is just doing some overhand loops around the eye and back up around the eye back up that way it's posted out you can see those eyes uh, 
are kind of sticking out like a Y from the hook shank, and that's what we want. So once those are in, cover that up a little bit more, and we're going to be set to put the legs on. So now that we have our eyes set, we're going to go ahead and add our silly legs. So we want to take three full length silly legs. We're going to go ahead and wrap these around our thread, pinch them together, and tie this straight down the hook shank all the way till we meet that estaz and then we're gonna just cover it up with some nice thread wraps that way it's nice and secure those legs aren't gonna slip just like that now when it comes to trimming these off we want to bring them out to a little past an inch maybe an inch and a quarter and go ahead and trim them off the first material we're going to be using for the body is our one and a half inch foxy brush so we want to pull one of those strands out just like that now we're going to go ahead and secure one end of that foxy brush to the hook shank and we're going to do two palmers around before we secure it again so go ahead and secure that down nice and tight and remember as we palm this forward we want to be pulling those fibers back just like we've done in the previous flies pull those fibers back it's one time and that's two times around so we want to separate that a little bit bring our thread in there and secure that off now again guys this has some metal in it so use your stupid scissors to get in there close and trim that off once it's trimmed just do some nice secure wraps to kind of tighten that up and cover up that little piece of wire that's sticking up there. There we go. So all that material should be brushed back towards the eyes on that fly. So our next step guys is going to be to secure our lead eyes. So we're going to go ahead and take one of those out. There we go. Now before we attach these eyes we want to move this thread all the way back up the shank of the hook to the eye. Just lay a nice even thread base all the way up to the eye and we're going to come back just a little bit just about like that now that we have our thread where we want it to be we can go ahead and attach our lead eye right to the top of the hook shank and I've done four cross wraps now I want to come in and do four just the opposite way securing that right down about four and what's important here is to do some under belly wraps is what I call them where you're actually coming down under it just like that and then apply some more tight wraps across and repeat that process there we go nice and secure alright so now that we have our eyes secured all we have to do is create the body of the spline so we're going to go ahead and open up our Backcountry 3D EP fibers and get started selecting fibers for that body. So you can see guys there's a staple right here in this. What I like to do is pull this piece of paper off and then carefully work that staple right out of there. If you start to pull the fibers out while the staple's in there you're going to mess up your fibers. They're laid real nice and neat in there. So now when we take these fibers out, you can see they kind of stay nice and together, just like that. So we'll pull all these out and then go ahead and select a few fibers. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and slide those fibers out. And what I like to do is just keep it nice and close and come in here and pinch off about half the diameter of a pencil. Um, kind of just like that. Pinch off a little section. there we go get it just right and then you can just pull that apart okay try and keep these as neat as possible but there you can see we have a nice little group of fibers that we're going to be working with now we want to cut this fiber into six little pieces so we're going to start by cutting this fiber in half there we go and then we want to cut each of these sections into thirds so we'll come on in, cut that piece, 
and cut that piece. There we go. And we'll do the same for this other fiber here. There we go. So now we have our six pieces. So now we're going to take these fibers that we've cut and we're going to use figure eight wraps or cross wraps to secure them right to this side of the hook shank. So we have our fly uh, essentially right side up now. And we're going to try and start this first fiber as close back as we can. Okay, so where it's just about like that. We've done one cross wrap and we want to come in and come the other way. I used loose wraps at first, then reposition the fibers where I need them, and then pull down tight to secure that. I do a few more wraps, make sure it's in there good. There we go, just like that. After that, we want to position our thread to do the next set, which is going to be right in front of those fibers. Now we're going to apply our second set of fibers right in front of those and we want to be careful not to grab any of those other fibers as we do this. So remember loose wraps at first and once you come in between these guys be real careful not to grab them just like that. Again loose wraps make sure they're in position once you're comfortable with where they're at you can secure it down. You might have to do some wraps up in front of those fibers in order to make them stick out straight. Okay, they're gonna want to move around on you. So using tight wraps in this stage is gonna be important. Just like that. So we're gonna use those same steps to attach all our fibers as we move forward towards those eyes. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So we're all set with that step. The only thing we have to do now is move our thread to the front and add our little weed guard. So for our weed guard, we're gonna take our red label 40 pound and our hefty scissors and come in and cut about an inch and a half section of that off, just like that. All right, so if you look at the tip of this fluorocarbon, you can see I've flattened it out and I just use my teeth on this. If you have little pliers around, you can use the pliers uh, needle nose works great just to flatten one end of that out and that's where we're going to use or that's what's going to be secured to the tip of the fly. So now we're going to set that flat end right in between the eyes and do some figure eight wraps to secure that down. Okay. Now we want to also make sure that we get the back of that tab that's sticking up. And then come up in front and wrap that tightly all the way up to the hook, all the way up to the eye of the hook. Next, to post this up, we want to pull that mono back towards the point of the hook and do some very tight wraps closely underneath that. It's going to take about 12 wraps, 12 to 15, to really get that to post straight up. And we want to just be applying pressure back on that fluorocarbon and on the thread as we wrap underneath there. Okay, there you go. You can see how that's standing up pretty straight. Once you have it where you want it, bring your thread back up to the front and we're gonna go ahead and trim this off. I like to use my bigger scissors to trim this heavy fluorocarbon and we want it about anywhere between a half inch to three quarters of an inch long. So we can come in there and trim that off. That's perfect. Now that we have that posted up, grab your whip finisher and you can come in and whip finish right behind that post. There 
There you go. Come in real close and trim it off. Just like that. Next we're going to apply our Zappa Gap. We want to put some of that right along in between the eyes and around that post. Then rotate the fly upside down and you can see these threads are exposed on the bottom. So we want to go ahead and put a pretty good coat of Zappa Gap over those threads. That way they're nice and protected. Some of that might get on your thread wraps there or your fibers and that's okay. Uh, that's actually going to stiffen it up just a little bit and keep that body intact. So cover those thread wraps all the way back to that foxy brush. And right there guys, that's a finished version of this fly. All we have to do now is come in and trim off those fibers. Last step guys is to come in and trim these EP fibers. So we're going to take our longer scissors and we want to cut at an angle going away from those eyes. Okay, so it's kind of tapered back. Okay, and it's really important when you do this, you don't want to cut too much off on your first go um, because if you cut too much off, there's no way to replace it. Okay, that's common sense. So I usually do a little cut and then come back and fix it up just a little bit. Okay, so just like that. We're kind of tapered back away. And we're going to want to do the same thing for that other side. So now that one side is trimmed off, we're going to try and do the other side at that same angle. Moving away from those eyes as we move back. And remember, trim it a little long so you can go back and clean it up just a little bit. There we go. So our grassy crab pattern, that thing is like cocaine to bottom feeders. I mean, it really is. I mean, that's not even making a joke neither. The thing those little words, legs sticking up, you know, just blowing around. Any little current's going to kick those guys. And uh, the green eyes we kind of settled on after switching out between what color we wanted. Um, and colors for the body, we really just kind of wanted it to blend in uh, a little bit. I know a lot of the black drum, you'll see it moving real slow, just picking things up. And we wanted something that didn't just jump out in the fish's face. Uh, so that's kind of what we settled on with those EP fibers. Uh, the fly's been fished around the Mosquito Lagoon, Indian River, and a little bit around the Ozello area. It tends to be pretty weedless. We, we've kind of settled with medium, plain dumbbell eyes, but, you know, you could really put whatever you want on there. Sometimes I tie it lighter. If I'm in shallow water, you don't really need a medium eye. Like a small eye is, is going to be just fine. That way it's not splashing in the water once that thing drops. Uh, if you're not leading fish, you know, six feet, you're going to want something that's going to be sitting there and land as quietly as possible. So you can mix it up with the eyes, guys. That's not said, obviously. But um, typically where we've fished it, we've wanted those medium eyes on there. Um, i fished a lot of crab patterns in the past, you know, from fleeing crabs to merkins. And this was kind of just a mix-up of, of the two, to be honest. Instead of having the, the legs kicking out the sides like a merkin, uh, we kind of just shot them all right out the front, uh, right at the hook bend. And it's worked out good. It's a really good looking fly in the water. And uh, multiple species are going to be interested in it for sure. Alright guys, so if you've followed us along and you've followed those steps, you're going to be staring at a grassy crab sitting right on your vise. Awesome pattern, like I said, for redfish and snook. If you have a chance to throw it at some permanent or some bonefish, I'd say go ahead and give it a shot. Um, at this point, you followed us through tying the commissioner. Uh, we went through the backwater special, the poppin' flat shrimp, and now the grassy crab. Hopefully those are great additions to your fly box. We really appreciate you tuning in, checking this video out. Um, if you like what you saw here, guys, please check out our website, backwaterflyfishing.com. Uh, and like us on Facebook, check out the YouTube uh, channel for updates on our fishing adventures as well as other short time videos. Uh, but as far as this is concerned, guys, we're wrapping it up right here. 
Thanks for tuning in to In the Spread.